Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Breakaway Ministries Director Timothy Atik, who just brought the message Ambassadors in Christ. Welcome. Thanks. Always a joy to have you back here Always teaching. Great to and be today, back. what a great message. Thanks. Um, yeah, and uh, presented it so well. There's just these four pieces of um, our role and responsibility as ambassadors yep. in Christ. Um, and so I want to ask something, um, just kind of like both sides of what you talked about, about entering into people's lives. Yep. So the first question I wanted to ask is, um, so where do you draw the line on being friends of sinners or feeling or feeling like you're enabling your sin or participating in their sin? Of How, do, how does that yep. look? Like how, does, how can that look? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I think it'll look different for each person. I think I have to start by saying, you know, you need to know your own mm -hmm. tendencies well, really well. Mm -hmm. That might mean that you don't go certain places or do certain things with, with people just because it will lead you into temptation. Mm -hmm. And so please hear me say that from the beginning. But um, you know, I think the goal is to engage with people in a way where you be true to who you are. So that means that you might, um, you, you never compromise your standards for the sake of the gospel, but that doesn't mean that you can't be with someone and love them. It might impact where you go with them. That might mm -hmm. mean that you have to, you are the one who schedules the time to say, mm -hmm. hey, let's get lunch. You can control that, whether it's going to lunch or, um, you know, connecting for a workout or something like that, you might control where you guys meet mm -hmm. and what y'all are doing when you meet. Um, but the, but the goal, but the goal is love. And in terms of enabling their sin, um, you know, I think by you being present in your li in their lives, you're not, you're not saying that you approve of their mm -hmm. sin. I do think that you don't want to judge them for their sin, yeah. but I think it's to you. You can gently say, "Hey, man, let me let me just encourage you. I see you head in this mm -hmm. direction. Let me just tell you what I've found in my own life mm -hmm. to be true. I'm on this very imperfect journey, but I've found life elsewhere. I don't mm -hmm. know if that makes sense. It does. But it does. One uh, things that I've found helpful is being able to say, like. I struggled with this yeah. same thing that you're struggling yeah. with, and here's yeah. what I've found to help yeah. me bring freedom or yeah. to help me bring hope. Um, yeah. And just, uh, I think you can easily approach this question of like, oh, I'm the Christian, you're the sinner, but we're all the sinner. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, all all the same, yeah, we, we all have the same together. Yeah, we all have the same seat at the table. Yeah. We're all broken. Yeah. Um, and using what God has done in our brokenness to, That's right. to talk That's to people. That's always a bridge. Um, so let me ask you about the other side because uh, I have found myself in this situation actually uh, when I was first being discipled. Um, someone pointed out to me this thing that I had in my life, which is I've only surrounded myself with Christian friends. Yeah. Uh, I've built this bubble around yeah. myself. Um, and uh, so what do you do when you find yourself in that situation? What's some steps you can take to begin expanding yeah. your circles? Well, I think the word is intentionality, mm -hmm. that something is going to have to change in order for you to get around people who don't know the Lord. So mm -hmm. you can't leave church today and, and just hope that you stumble into it, okay? But there are easy things that you can do to there's easy changes you can make. For example, um, have a normal lunch spot. Like if you go out to lunch every day, go to the same two or three places and get to know the wait staff. Mm -hmm. Ask to sit in someone's section. Ask if they're working. You know, I try it when I go to a restaurant, I try and ask the person for their name to get to know their name, mm -hmm. even ask a little bit about their story. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good place to start. It and might mean that you, uh, you know, you go work out at a certain place or you get involved in a group of people uh, working out um, to do that. It might just be as much as, you know, 
if your kids play sports, mm -hmm. instead of standing on the sidelines with mm -hmm. just you and your spouse mm -hmm. and being like, I don't want to engage with anyone, yeah. you make it a goal to say, you know what, I'm going to introduce myself to the person sitting next to me and just and talk to them. Yeah. If there are neighbors that whose names you still don't know on your street, man, that is it. Mm -hmm. There you go. You start there. Mm -hmm. You go knock on the door and say, you know what, it's crazy. We have lived next to each other for three years. I just, I figured it's about time for us to meet. Mm -hmm. And so that I would just take those steps. Start with your street. Yeah, Who do really you need good. to engage with on your street? Start with your normal routines. If you can change it, and that means you start eating at the same place. You might get tired of the food, but you know what? You're not there for the food. You're there for the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's really good. Uh, one exercise that uh, he had our whole team do was sort of walk through your day, where you go, who you interact yeah. with. And I was like, oh, I see the same people at the dry cleaner. Yep. Two or three times That's a week, right. dropping off and picking up my, yep. I know their names. I'm beginning to know their stories. Like, I get my hair cut by the same person. Like, there are places where, like, that conversation could be a lot more intentional yep. than I've ever, it's that a, I've ever made it's it. It's always mm -hmm. line yourself up with the with the same people. So it might, might mean you, you use the same repair companies so that mm -hmm. you can interact with the same people. You get your hair cut from the same person mm -hmm. so that you can, I mean, that, I've had, two great opportunities over the years mm -hmm. to share the gospel with people who cut my hair, the person who cut my hair in Austin, the person who cut my hair in Waco. Mm -hmm. We've had that opportunity. And so it's just increasing visibility with the same person because over time you can build that relationship. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, okay, so here's the last question. And I, and I bet a lot of people probably were like motivated. Yes, this is right. This is true. I want to do this. I'm called to do this. But how do I do it? Yeah. How do I tell other people about Jesus? Like, yeah. I don't feel like I have all the answers. Yeah. Uh, how do I? I definitely don't have all <laughs> the answers. I'll tell you, it is much easier to get into a spiritual conversation than you would ever think. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just rattle off a few things. They're in no order. But um, in terms of questions that you could ask anyone at any time, starting with your waiter or waitress at lunch, like, for example, a question that a friend gave me that I've started asking people is this. Is, is I, I did this with, uh, with the air conditioned guy not long ago. But I'll just say, hey, man, um, prayer is something that's really important to me. Let me just ask you real quick. Is there anything you or your family needs that I could ask God to help you with mm -hmm. today? That's good. And I, I've only had one person in all the time who just waved me up and said, mm -hmm. no, thanks. That's because I walked up to him on a beach and he's probably like, you're invading yeah, my wasn't. personal space. But for the most part, usually when it's coupled with a friendly interaction, people are like, it's been interesting how people have opened up and said, this is going on. And if someone says, no, I'm good, then say, man, then when I leave here, I'm just going to pray and thank God that everything's going well in your life. Mm -hmm. that, that might feel too forward for you. So if that feels too forward, then another question you can simply ask is, hey, let me just, if you know, we've known each other for a long time. Let me ask you, we've never talked about this, but do you have a faith? And to just ask that question, do you have a faith? Mm -hmm. And I think you'd be surprised how many people, you're not, you're not saying, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord? <laughs> you're just saying, hey, tell me about your life. It's mm -hmm. you're expressing interest mm -hmm. in who they are as a person. Yeah. And I think you'd be surprised how many people are interested in opening up. I think, um, I think I would ask one of those two questions. And then the third thing that I would tell you is the best thing you can do is be, be honest about who you are and how God has changed your life. So if, if God has done something for you, don't shy away from bringing up God in the conversation. Like just the other day, I was sitting with some architects and I was talking about, you know, God has given us this opportunity. I don't know if they're Christians or mm -hmm. not, but it doesn't matter. This is what God has done mm -hmm. in my life. I don't need to, to hide that because of who these people might be. So don't be afraid to give God credit where credit is due and then know how to share your story in, mm -hmm. in a minute or less. Mm -hmm in different forms to say, you know what, you know what, Harvey hit and our home was flooded and you know what, that was a defining moment in our lives and God really showed up and you know what, one of the ways that God really showed up in our lives is He put around people, put people in our lives mm -hmm. who, who loved us and cared for us in the name of Jesus. You know what, someone can choose how they want to respond to that, mm -hmm. but you're not 
forcing anything yeah. upon them. You're just testifying to what God has done in your own life. So be true to that. That's and good. I guarantee you it will, out of that, you can say, hey, well, you know, I, obviously you can see God's something that's important to me. Tell me, do you have a faith? And you know what? The most awkward part is the first 15 seconds. Yeah. And the the other 30 minutes of the conversation are it's nothing but joy. It's a real normal life yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, I think what you, the, the key pieces that you kind of let out are important because I grew up in the church and I feel like I felt like this was like, like a speech I had to give or yeah. like the five points or like the three things and I had to like hit all these things. And then as I matured and I've grown years ago when I started sort of making this corner, I was like, oh, it's just asking people questions. Yeah. It's just getting it's to just know them. No, it's just sharing my, yeah. sharing my own story. These are things that I can do and say in, yeah. from my own experience. Um, and so knowing, you know, being able to verbalize your story, asking questions are all great People are giving you signs started. they want you, you to ask them a question. question. Someone has a mm -hmm. tattoo that's visible, it's because they, they want, want you, you to ask, ask. them, mm -hmm. tell me about your tattoo. People will wear shirts that beg the Why What is that about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, people want to be asked questions that are deeper than, than surface level, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yep, anyway. and I've learned the more you do it. <laughs> Yeah. The more you put yourself right. out there, the more intentional you are, the more comfortable you get to where you're not even thinking about it when you encounter people. Yeah, you're, and you're right. generally interested in knowing yeah. them. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, great just message for us to just be out yeah. and be engaged in people's lives. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate you being yeah, here. You and thank you for joining us for PostScript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.